In today's video, I'll be discussing the recent developments in the GTA 6 mapping project. We'll delve into the latest additions, including new locations featured in Trailer 1, adjustments to existing locations, refinements in certain areas, and exciting discoveries from the latest trailer, such as the yacht interior, surfboards, princess robot bubblegum, and more. Let's start by examining the mapping project itself. It's been some time since our last update on this front, and there have been notable changes to the map since then. This iteration represents the most recent version of the GTA 6 mapping project, spearheaded by Dupi's Zero R. Below, you'll find a roster of individuals who have contributed to this endeavor, and it's worth noting that this list has been recently updated. This project stands as the largest and most comprehensive effort within the fan community, with the goal of predicting the map of GTA 6 as accurately as possible prior to its official unveiling. DuPZ's Zero R mentioned that there's still an extensive list of elements to incorporate and modify, but for now, this update suffices. Anticipate further alterations to the map in subsequent updates. This iteration represents the latest version of the GTA 6 mapping project. Notable adjustments have been made to the legend and the manner in which various elements are annotated on the map. All markers now include viewing cones to indicate their general viewing direction. However, it's important to note that the angle of these cones is merely symbolic. Additionally, speculative location markers have been updated with red outlines to differentiate them from non-location markers. Furthermore, coordinate markers now display their corresponding clip names for easier identification. Changes have also been made to the naming conventions in the key section. For instance, you'll notice that the markers now include the names of the clips they are derived from. Let's delve into the alteration specific to Vice City. The angles of Rock Ridge and Stockyard have been tweaked to align with calculations slash evidence and to better match the coordinates. By observing the outlines, you can see that both the Rock Ridge and Stockyard areas have been subtly adjusted, ensuring a more cohesive layout. There's a noticeable improvement in alignment. A notable update to the map is this section here. Previously, absent features have been incorporated from the edges of one of Rock Ridge's mini-maps, and adjustments have been made to the water's edge in that vicinity now depicted in dark green to indicate the genuine boundaries of this section of the Vice River. Additionally, several buildings in the Rock Ridge area have been identified, including the Rock Ridge Community Research Center, Miami Police Department, Venture Apartments, Orange and Pink, 7071 Warren Thacker Manor, inspired by Martin Fine Villa, Palace Cafe and Diary, all sourced from leaks. Furthermore, there are two speculative markers outlined in red, representing locations from the trailer. One in Rock Ridge is speculated to be the Hammer Hamlet Ladies location, while the other marks the high roller scene from the trailer. You can find the timestamps for both scenes on the map. Updates have been made to the route of the I-404, incorporating new evidence. This includes adjustments in Vice Beach and the positioning of the road near Rock Ridge. Notably, there have been alterations to the highway section near the airport. Additionally, speculative terrain and building positions in Washington Beach have been revised to align more closely with the evidence. Changes have been made to the shapes and locations of the Ritz-Carlton Bal Harbor, Akoya Condos, and Jade Ocean Condos. Furthermore, alongside the speculative road and landmass in the Bayfront Heights area, the Y Vice City and Gate Slash Continental Hotels have been included in the Vice Beach vicinity. Additionally, several minor adjustments and fixes have been implemented. Regarding the Vice Beach area, there have been additions of new buildings supported by recent evidence. These include 200 Ocean Drive, 260 Ocean Drive, 1043 Washington Avenue, Beach Park Hotel, and Council Towers North. Moreover, over at Brickle Key Island, two new buildings, Brickle Key 1 and Brickle Key 2, have been introduced. Additionally, corrections have been made to the names of the Tequesta Point locations, accurately reflecting their respective positions. Now, let's shift our focus away from Vice City. Firstly, an error regarding St. Joseph has been rectified. Previously labeled in purple, it should have been marked in red to signify that this name hasn't been confirmed in the leaks, but is either speculative or based on real-life data. Moving westward towards Port Gellhorn, there have been notable additions to the leaked industrial area opposite the state prison, along with improvements to the prison itself. Several speculative structures, highlighted in red, including a water tower and industrial buildings, have been incorporated, along with a cell tower across from the prison. Heading south to the Keys, significant improvements have been made. Adjustments to the landmass near the camera location, where the shot with the Dodal seaplane occurs, have been made based on speculative evidence. An airbase slash runway has been added, 
along with guard booth and barriers visible in the trailer. Additionally, two speculative buildings marked in red, as well as the speculative naval area station, have been included. That wraps up all the updates to the GTA 6 mapping project. Share your thoughts in the comments below. There have been some significant changes with this update. But now, let's shift our attention to the discoveries made in the trailer. I also wanted to touch on these findings in this video. This marks the initial Reddit post. In the GTA 6 trailer, you can see through the yacht windows and see the interior even though it's very far away. However, in GTA 5, you can't at all see the interior even from close up. We will probably get inside the yacht and maybe even houses, or at least see inside it. In the shot of the Venetian island, it's evident that there will be a high density of yachts. It seems that the boats will be easily accessible, and based on the leaked shot featuring Jason on a boat from 2022, it's probable that players will have the freedom to enter, drive, and explore yachts like the catamaran seen in the opening scene of the trailer. Now, on to the next discovery, surfboards. Know a lot of people been talking about surfing, and while there's still nothing indicating it being an interactive mini-game surfboards, are in-game and seen in the trailer. Surfboards were in five, but only on the tops of certain cars, and a few static ones sat the beach. What do you all think? Will surfboards act as decorations like they were in five? Or will it be a fully fledged minigame? Personally, I'm not fully convinced yet, but if NPCs do have actual schedules slash lives, I can't see things like surfboards just being static, especially at the beach. My guess is we'll see NPCs bring their own items to and from the beach, including surfboards, but the interactiveness is still in question. From the leaks, there hasn't been any information indicating that surfing will be an interactive activity in the game. Nonetheless, there have been numerous articles discussing this possibility, like the one mentioned here. Major GTA 6 leak allegedly hints at surfing to debut in series. The upcoming GTA 6, officially untitled, leaks are becoming more frequent and interesting, with a recent one revealing that the upcoming title will include new water sports, such as surfing. According to a report by the Dexerto Gaming website, a leaker named Alix Venturas revealed on Twitter that Rockstar Games plans to improve the water physics in Grand Theft Auto 6 and will introduce several water-based activities. While the gaming studio has not officially commented on the leak, players are convinced, given that Grand Theft Auto 6 will almost certainly feature Vice City, a fictional version of Miami, Florida, known for its beaches and water activities. However, it's important to note that these rumors haven't been confirmed by either the official leaks or the trailer. It remains to be seen whether these surfboards will merely serve as decorations. Now, on to the next and final discovery I'd like to highlight in this video, which might just be your favorite. Princess Robot Bubblegum is confirmed to be in GTA 6. Just like the Righteous Slaughter game series, Princess Robot Bubblegum is seen on a shirt and will most likely return with more episodes. The series originally appeared in The Ballad of Gay Tony and again with more episodes in GTA 5, making this the third appearance. We're diving into an upcoming terrain system in GTA 6 brought to you by Rockstar Games. Additionally, we'll explore some cool graphics enhancements like ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting slated for the next GTA. The scoop comes straight from an official patent filed by Take-Two Interactive Rockstar's parent company. So let's kick things off by checking out the patent titled Method and Apparatus for Enhanced Graphics Rendering in a Video Game Environment. According to Rockstar Games, the rendering of real-time graphics you usually happens in a pipeline setup like this one. At the core of it, the process kicks off by handling 3D vertex information, moving on to render pixel-level details like light color and shadows. In the current systems, one or more shaders are employed for this pixel-level rendering. These shaders are essentially programs that operate on the GPU. The challenge in rendering lies in finding the right balance between realism and detail, while ensuring smooth performance, aiming for that higher frame rate. For example, a virtual world should illustrate various terrains that mirror a number of lifelike geographical areas. Each of these terrains can provide unique interactions with a virtual character in the video game. By way of example, a virtual player traveling through sand or snow should leave footprints that are different than the virtual player walking down a concrete sidewalk. However, because of the number of various terrains that need be accounted for, and the unique behavior of each terrain, Conventional graphics systems do not have enough processing power to account for dynamic terrain and the associated interaction with players of the game. So, Rockstar Games developed a shader system for efficiently rendering various types of terrain with high realism. Let's take a peek at the system. The world level map, visible in the bottom right, outlines all the different dynamic terrains, such as muddy, sandy, grassy, hard ground, snowy, and more. Take a gander at this world level map showcasing the diverse terrains. Now, let's explore the various dynamic terrain zones within the game world. 
Using Red Dead Redemption 2 as an illustration, this world level map plays a pivotal role in determining the terrain that players or NPCs interact with. Essentially, it acts as the foundation to generate a trail map. Think of a trail map as a record of all the imprints left behind by characters, vehicles, and other objects, like the aftermath of explosions. Take this image for instance, showcasing how the snow has been altered by the actions of this NPC. Different shaders of the shader system are used for different terrain types and with different trail map types. For example, basic terrains do not require special shaders, while shallow mud terrains can advantageously benefit from a parallax surface shader to efficiently show ruts and tracks in the terrain with a high detail trail map. As an additional example, deep mud terrain may use a tessellation surface shader to model the ruts and tracks in the mud. You might be aware that in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can leave realistic footprints in the snow and mud. Rockstar explained that they employ two shaders for this effect parallax maps, and desolation. These shaders create a convincing illusion of high-level deformation, where footprints appear on the terrain's surface. In reality, the surface is warped, but not physically deformed, ensuring a smooth and polished movement experience. In GTA 6, they're applying the same technique to bring an extra layer of realism. This will be particularly noticeable with explosions, firing RPGs at the ground, walking through mud, or driving vehicles through it, each leaving distinct tracks based on the terrain. RPGs, for instance, will create crazy on the ground. This adds a significant level of interactivity, making it feel like you're genuinely impacting the game world in real time. Despite it being an illusion, the result will be remarkably realistic, akin to the snow in Red Dead Redemption 2. To sum it up, this graphics rendering patent encompasses the dynamic terrain, ambient occlusion, global illumination, and material tinting, all exciting new features making their way to GTA 6. Rockstar has invented and patented new graphics rendering systems, which aims to fix some of the problems of traditional graphics rendering systems to make graphics rendering more efficient, thus improving performance and allowing for better, more realistic, and more immersive visuals. Dynamic Terrain System This is a system that records and creates trail maps which make it possible that terrains can be visually deformed when being interacted with in various ways. Players, NPCs, vehicles, objects, and explosions can affect the terrain. For example, leaving footprints or vehicle tracks in sand can be seen in action in Trailer 1. Explosions will leave craters in the terrain as well. It's also possible for certain changes to the terrain to disappear over time. For example, footprints and tracks in mud disappearing after some time since the viscosity of mud makes it return to its normal state after some time. There are different types of terrains, for example, muddy, sandy, hard ground, grassy or snowy terrain. Each type of terrain will react differently. A sandy terrain will be more easily deformed than a grassy terrain, for example. In the initial part of our video, we delved into the rendering pipeline, which also incorporates a lighting stage. While conventional systems often utilize cube maps for pre-rendering lighting, it's worth noting that this is mainly for static elements. When it comes to dynamic characters, pre-computed lighting falls short in accommodating changes from objects within the scene. Although ambient occlusion can be pre-baked, it lacks the capability to update dynamically. Realism takes a hit due to this. Conventional systems often incorporate static lights to mimic reflected light, like sunlight bouncing off the ground and under a table. However, this static approach fails to update with changes in the light source. To address these challenges, Rockstar has patented new systems. Ambient Occlusion This is a graphics technique that can be utilized in multiple forms to determine how light and shading are displayed on an object. It can lead to darkened areas, enhanced contrast, and improved surfaces due to this technology. This patent's Ambient Occlusion system offers some special advantages. Determined by either preset or randomized assets based on developer discretion, the lighting can greatly provide a new vision to world building to make certain areas stand out, akin to a real-life setting. Global Illumination Global Illumination is a graphics rendering technique that models how light is bounced off of surfaces onto other surfaces in direct light, rather than being limited to just the light that hits a surface directly from a light source, direct light. Rockstar system detailed in this patent uses a bounce map that is projected in a top-down fashion to determine reflected light off of the ground. This bounce map is then converted into a texture that provides an approximation for the expected bounce back of light. This simulates the effect that would be achieved rendering the multiple passes of lighting to account for the natural bounce reflections. The bounce map can then be integrated into the lighting pipeline. During this, a technique is used to determine the area that needs this extra pass for each frame. This way, only the visible and required area is rendered with this technique thus making it very efficient and less performance intensive. Overall, this provides many of the benefits of ray tracing without the computational expense. Ray traced global illumination will probably still be in the game, 
For example, Lucia prison clip in trailer one. This special system is just a way to render large scale global illumination efficiently. Now, let's touch on the final problem that Rockstar has addressed through this patent with conventional systems. Finally, as another example, to develop a rich and engaging game world, it is advantageous to populate the world with variations of similar objects. In other words, you do not want every simulated person, cow, gun, car, cart, ship, or animal generated in the game to look the same. Because the 3D model for many of these objects would be identical, variation was traditionally accomplished by creating different texture files to paint a different look on the object. For example, two variants of a cow model could be created, one with a texture to create a brown cow, and the other with a texture to create a black cow. These prior art systems created the desired variety at the cost of artist time, computer memory, and resources to maintain a multitude of different hand-authored variants for each in-game object. To combat this, Rockstar is introducing material tinting. RDR2 had a system that could tint the color of clothes to create far more variations on NPCs. This new patent is an evolution of that system and allows for creating of several in-game object variants from a single model. It can not only modify an object's colors, but other material properties, such as metalness and lighting parameters, or add additional layers to it, such as mud, snow, or dust as well. Envision the extent of customization that awaits in this game. Summing up the official patent for graphics rendering, it's evident that Rockstar has elevated numerous systems from Red Dead Redemption 2. From 2022 and onward, a group of passionate GTA fans have been diving deep into GTA 6 gameplay leaks, and what they discovered was wild. Their mission? They're trying to map out the entire landscape of GTA 6 before Rockstar Games even releases the official game. And guess what? They're actually making some serious headway. This is all about the ongoing GTA 6 mapping project. So how did this whole endeavor start anyway? It's an interesting story that not many folks are aware of. You see, there was a similar craze back when GTA 5 was announced. Back in 2011, a group of dedicated fans took it upon themselves to predict and sketch out the layout of GTA 5's terrain. How did they do this? By meticulously analyzing every single trailer that Rockstar Games dropped in the year leading up to the game's eventual release in 2013. The surprising part? When the game finally hit the shelves, a substantial chunk of what these fans had mapped out turned out to be surprisingly accurate. Sure, there were a few locations that were a bit inaccurate, like the military base being off and the dam placed in the wrong spot. Also, there were some variations in the overall shape of San Andreas, but considering they solely relied on Rockstar's official footage and had put in two years of work, their accuracy was pretty commendable. Now imagine this, if they could pull off that level of detail with just the trailers, Think about what these enthusiasts could achieve with the leaked, under-the-radar stuff that slipped out prematurely. Plus, add in an extra year of combing through details and data. This mapping project is being led by a user called Dupzor, who is the project manager of this whole thing. On September 18th, 2022, when a massive leak dropped over 90 minutes of GTA 6 footage, the map enthusiasts went into full gear. While I can't exactly showcase the leaked content here, what really sparked the interest of the community were the coordinates embedded within the developer's HUD. These sneaky numbers revealed the exact whereabouts of the player concerning the game map. And let me tell you, GTA 6 fans wasted no time diving into this goldmine of information. With these coordinates in hand, the community went Sherlock Holmes mode, meticulously mapping out the game's terrain and identifying key locations. For instance, in one intriguing clip from the leaks, Lucia and Jason were caught in the act, robbing what seemed to be a Waffle House this incident was marked by a simple white dot on their evolving map project. But it wasn't just a random dot, it was a significant clue. By cross-referencing the coordinates provided in this clip with other glimpses from the leaked footage, they managed to calculate the spatial relationships between different spots showcased in the leaks. This detective work allowed them to gauge distances and plot out the relative positioning of these places within the game world. However, it didn't stop there. The community didn't solely rely on leaked footage, they combined their detective skills with the official trailer and using a blend of educated guesses and hard data, endeavored to include every conceivable road, building, and landmark featured in the GTA 6 map. The goal? To create a comprehensive and accurate representation of the game's virtual world based on all available tidbits of information. It's a fascinating process that demonstrates the dedication and passion of gaming communities in piecing together the puzzle of what to expect in GTA 6. Since the leaks hit, the GTA community has been on a mission, working tirelessly to piece together the game's map. Their focus has mainly been on sketching out the main areas, the cities, towns, and key landmarks. It's been quite a collective effort, with everyone trying to contribute and fill in the blanks based on whatever clues they could find. 
Then, the trailer dropped, and it was a whole new ball game. Among all the fast cars and flashy scenes, Rockstar slipped in a subtle surprise for the observant fans. After a few days of dissecting the trailer frame by frame, someone spotted it. A tiny image hidden in the bottom right corner of the ending screen. And guess what? It looked like a map snippet. Naturally, the community went into full detective mode. They put on their magnifying glasses and compared this mysterious map with the one they'd been building from the leaks. There were some similarities, especially with the layout of the right side and the presence of separate islands at the bottom, surrounded by water. But here's the catch. That image was pixelated to the max. It was like trying to figure out a puzzle with half the pieces missing. The lack of detail made it nearly impossible to confirm if it matched their map. This whole revelation sparked a heated debate among fans. Some folks started wondering if Rockstar deliberately threw this low-res map nugget to mess with their heads. Could it be that Rockstar is messing with the community, leading the GTA 6 mapping project into the wrong path? It's pretty odd for Rockstar to include this map as it was deliberately placed. When it comes to safeguarding the details of their upcoming games, Rockstar is notoriously tight-lipped. So, when those leaks dropped in 2022, it really threw a spanner in the works for the company. It's kind of a deja vu situation, considering a similar thing happened back when GTA 5 was in the spotlight. I can't help but wonder if Rockstar did this deliberately, you know, as a deliberate move to shake things up and keep everyone guessing. But then again, we, the GTA fans, are pretty good at concocting theories out of thin air. Now, about that mysterious, highly detailed artwork nestled in the official wallpaper, that's what's really piqued my interest. It's like this odd piece that stands out from the rest, making me think it wasn't just randomly thrown in there. There's gotta be some intention behind it, right? The big question swirling around is whether it's a sly misdirection or a subtle clue for the savvy gamers. But honestly, we won't get any answers until the game hits the shelves. Or maybe, if we're lucky, after another sneak peek in a new trailer. The GTA 6 mapping community dove headfirst into dissecting this artwork. But truth be told, there wasn't much to work with. So, they've been sticking to the stuff they can actually confirm. Oh, and those maps floating around, especially the ones from IGN and PC Gamer? They're more like creative interpretations. Think of them as speculative mock-ups cooked up by the mapping community based on their hunches and educated guesses. There's a whole lot of imagination at play there, but none of it has received the official stamp of confirmation. The GTA 6 mapping project might not be dropping any bombshells about unknown locations in the game, especially considering how the gameplay leaks already spilled quite a bit on what's in store. Now the heart of this community effort lies in the finer details. They're all about pinning down the exact spots where these landmarks and locations are going to be placed within the game's vast world. However, let's be real here. They've barely scratched the surface, covering roughly just 10% of the entire map. Still, kudos to them for the tremendous effort and progress they've managed to make with what they have. What's confirmed, though, is that this map in GTA 6 is going to be an absolute beast, nearly double the size of the already sprawling map in GTA 5. They've made strides, particularly in fleshing out the Miami Beach region seen in the trailer, those gorgeous Venetian islands from the breathtaking aerial shot, and even narrowing down the location of Lucia's incarceration in the game. Looking ahead, this ongoing commitment over the coming years will gradually unveil more insights into what we can anticipate from the GTA 6 map. The anticipation is real, and it's fascinating to witness how this mapping endeavor will continue to shape our expectations for GTA 6. Looking at the timeline, it's pretty clear that both the completion of the project and the release of GTA 6 are still a considerable number of years down the road. But let me tell you, the dedication and hard work displayed by this community are nothing short of remarkable. Honestly, they deserve way more recognition for what they're doing. If you're keen on staying updated with the latest progress, or even lending a hand to this endeavor, I strongly recommend hopping onto the GTA 6 Mapping Community Discord. You'll find the link in the description below. These individuals have a monumental task ahead of them. But you know what? It's an incredibly intriguing project. Back in the days before GTA 5, I didn't even know something like this was happening behind the scenes. But now, as we patiently wait for 2025, Every snippet of information or rumor about GTA 6 gets me all excited. And out of everything related to the game, I find the mapping community's tireless efforts the most captivating and commendable. A massive thank you to every single person contributing their time and effort to this project. There's been quite a buzz about Jason, one of the main leads in the highly anticipated Grand Theft Auto 6. People are spinning theories left, right, and center, suggesting he might be an undercover cop, an agent, an ex-cop, or even someone with a military background. It's been the talk of the town ever since the first official trailer dropped. Now, I've got to warn you, 
What we're about to discuss might just spoil a bit of the GTA 6 storyline for you. But hey, if you've been keeping tabs on the GTA 6 grapevine, chances are you've already heard murmurs about these theories. Now, I gotta stress, folks, that as exciting as these speculations are, they're just that. Speculations. Nothing set in stone. But here's the deal. There are some interesting things in Jason's outfit, from certain glimpses in the trailers, and Rockstar's promotional stuff, that sort of fuel these speculations. They're like breadcrumbs teasing us about Jason's potential undercover identity. So today, I'm here to unravel these clues, and take you through the evidence we've got so far. We'll start with the very first trailer of Grand Theft Auto 6. You know, the one that set the internet on fire? We'll dissect it bit by bit, and get into the nitty gritty of this theory that's got the GTA 6 community all hyped up. And it's not just about the trailers, folks. Oh no, there's a whole treasure trove of articles out there, discussing findings made by fans, diving into details, and connecting dots. We're gonna sift through all that too. And hey, while we're at it, let's not forget about the actors. There's been some chatter about who might be stepping into the shoes of Jason in this game. So we'll toss that into the mix as well. There's plenty to unravel, and we're here to explore every nook and cranny of this speculation, piece by piece. So grab your favorite snack, get comfy, cause we're about to embark on a journey through the GTA 6 speculations, theories, and rumors about Jason. Let's start off by jumping into this interesting Reddit post. I've seen some speculation that Jason is an undercover cop makes sense since we see first-person gameplay of a police raid. I'm guessing he falls in love with Lucia, and his storm between his duty and his love could be not true, but it seems like it would be a good twist in something Rockstar would do. Okay, let's take a deeper dive into this scene where we encounter these four police officers. They're pretty unmistakably cops with that distinct police badge on their body armor. It's crucial to note the small details here, especially regarding their attire, as it might hold some key information. Now, among this squad of officers, there's one guy who stands out from the rest. He's chilling on the far right, sporting a casual white tank top, while the others are all suited up in body armor, their caps turned backward. This difference suggests a hierarchy within the group, making us wonder if this dude's perhaps a higher up or holds a different position within the force. The intriguing part, though, is the context of this scene. It feels like a pivotal moment, almost as if these officers are significant characters in the narrative. But let's pump the brakes a bit. It's all speculation at this point. We can't be certain of their importance or their roles in the storyline just yet. Now, let's loop this back to Jason, the main focus of our attention. There's a striking connection here. The cop on the far right and the one in the middle, both sporting these distinct olive green cargo pants. These pants seem to be a part of their uniform, something that catches the eye. But here's the twist. The same style of cargo pants is seen on Jason in the official Grand Theft Auto 6 artwork released by Rockstar. Coincidence? Maybe, but it feels like too much of a match to ignore. What's up with these pants? Is it a fashion trend among the police force in the GTA 6 universe? Or could it be hinting at a deeper connection between these officers and our protagonist, Jason? The plot thickens, and we're left to ponder the significance of these subtle visual cues. Is there a backstory linking these officers to Jason? Or is it merely a design choice by the creators to establish a visual pattern? We're left with questions, my friends. Questions that make us itch to uncover more about this intriguing storyline. So, buckle up as we continue this investigation, piecing together clues and theories, aiming to decipher the enigmatic links between these officers and our mysterious main character, Jason. There's a whole world of possibilities waiting to be explored within the realm of Grand Theft Auto 6. Let's dive into this article by Exputer that further supports this rumor. GTA 6 fans have been busy digging into the lore of both protagonists since the trailer dropped. It appears that users may already have found notable details about Jason. A slew of forums and posts have popped up with speculations with evidence that complies with prior findings. A post by the Redditor, Jack underscore Torrance 80, on the GTA 6 subreddit, solidifies the past rumors that clarified that Jason would start the game as a cop. The pants worn by the protagonist in the GTA 6 poster are a part of the official uniform of Miami-Dade Police. The green cargo pants are the same color used by the Miami-Dade Police SWAT team. Additionally, the inclusion of body cam footage in the trailer may also imply his past background as a cop. It is speculated that he was dismissed from the service during the events of the game, having to continue his life as a petty thief. In the side-by-side -side comparison, you'll notice something intriguing. Those pants on the right in the image are an exact match to the ones worn by those police officers in the trailer clip. The detailing with those black bands and the gun holsters, it's all there. But here's where it gets interesting. 
Jason, in the official artwork, doesn't seem to have any of those gun holsters. It's as if he decided to part ways with that gear when he left the police force, holding onto only those distinctive pants. Now, about that white tank top he's sporting in the artwork, it bears a striking resemblance to the one worn by the cop positioned on the far right in that clip. It's these little connections that make you wonder if there's more to it than meets the eye. Could it be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past, subtly linking him to the law enforcement world? Or is it just a coincidence? In the comments of the Reddit post, a user says, he is probably a dismissed cop or soldier, got too desperate and started to do petty crimes. Lucia brings him the local connections and scores, and he uses his former police training skills in weaponry and vehicles, a dismissed corrupt cop or soldier, a freshly out of jail ex-prisoner. Victor Vance and Tommy Versetti. And there could be more parallels between these two pairs of characters if you think about it. Vic was being betrayed again and again in his storyline. When he finally decided to quit, his brother pushed him to enter another deal with Tommy, which eventually killed him. Tommy, on the other hand, is a more cunning and ambitious person. He promised Rosenberg to leave him a piece of his Vice City Empire, but later abandoned him and left him exiled in Las Venturas. These observations really bring up some compelling comparisons, especially when looking at Tommy Vercetti and Victor Vance from previous GTA installments. There's a chance we might see echoes of similar themes or storylines reflected in GTA 6, which lines up nicely with what Rockstar teased in the trailer. Let's zero in on Jason's haircut. It's clean cut and short, a style often associated with law enforcement or military personnel. That detail might not be just a coincidence. It could be a deliberate choice by the creators to hint at Jason's past as an ex-cop or someone with a military background. It adds an extra layer of depth to his character, don't you think? I'm genuinely interested in hearing your take on this theory. There is a lot of evidence supporting this theory, and it might be a major deal as we might be working with the police possibly in GTA 6. That would be a completely new gameplay element in the GTA series, so we have a lot to look forward to. Tell me what are your thoughts and opinions about Jason's potential background, whether he's linked to law enforcement or not, as it could shed more light on this intriguing speculation. So, please share your thoughts in the comments section below, and let's keep this discussion rolling.